So the Dishwall guys, we all grew up together um, for the most part in a small town in California called Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we were learning our instruments and learning how to play in the 1980s. How old were you? For the most part. Like uh, you were kids? Like, I well, Jr. and George were kids. They were thirteen when they started playing together, what? and and it was on and off. You know, they'd gone different directions and, and joined different bands. But those two guys started playing together when they were thirteen. Um, How old were you when you met George and Jr.? Um, I met Jr. first actually because so Jr. had a studio at his parents' house. Right. New American recording or something, New American. And, and so uh, the band that I was in at the time was called Circus Life. And it was it was doing fairly well. We were recorded at JR's house. And he'd stop in. There, he had an engineer that, that was working in the recording there. And he would be in and out and stuff. And I learned that, oh, that's JR. He's in a band called Life Talking. Mm. Had a good following uh, in Santa Barbara. But primarily playing covers like 80s-ish covers in excess, right. Simple Minds, New Order, that kind of stuff, and um, which was like all the music I loved. <laughs> but Jer's a few years older, and um, I don't know, he kind of rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> it seemed kind of like arrogant or something, so I, it, it was just kind of a funny dynamic for a few years till I got to know him uh, later on when, when I, they asked me to. The way it happened was... I might be getting off topic, but no, 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 the, no, no. The, the band was called Life Talking, right? right? All through the '80s up until about 1992, it was still Life Talking, and it it had originals, and they put a CD out, and uh, it was, did fairly well. It sounded amazing, but it was just a little bit dated. It just sounded a little bit like one song sounds a lot like right. Simply Red, and. Um, it, it, it was really well recorded though and so anyway they had some management that was interested and they suggested why don't you get a bass player because at that time it was all sequenced mm. okay so there was like george was playing live drums right but they, he was playing to a sequencer exactly it was sequenced bass and and so um they suggested you get a live bass player they hired me for a couple shows they were paying me like a hundred bucks a gig or something, which was pretty good for at, at that point for me. So I was like, okay, yeah, why not? And then their, um, their sound guy manager <laughs> at that point came to me about two shows in is like, look, um, we can't afford to keep playing paying you a hundred bucks per show. Will you join the band <laughs> so we can pay you less? You know, you know, <laughs> that's what, like, that's what people don't understand. Right. Um, I was just talking to Mike a while ago, mm -hmm. literally a while ago, and shout out to their sixth man, because Mike's in a band yes. called New Day in August, right? And he's been hanging out with a guy called Ryan. Mm -hmm. And I go, Ryan's your sixth man, but then again, propose to him to make him part of the band. Yeah. He invests his time in everything else, but everything gets divided by six. Yeah, absolutely. So divide zero by six, divide $100 by six, but you don't pay him per show. Right. Yeah. And, and it's just, it, 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 it speaks more to the, like, you've got you to be a unified front. Mm. You've got to be all mm -hmm. with the same drive same and, goal. And, and the same goal. Yeah. And at that age, that's one thing we, that band had going for it. You know, I, I'd had some other projects and was, I felt like we're doing well and we're starting to get some indie label interest in right. Los Angeles and stuff. And it, it could have taken a different path, but I felt that with Rodney on guitar and JR being really good looking and, you know, the, the caliber of songs that they had, even though it was dated, that it, it, it just, there was a lot of potential there. And, so you saw that. And I was already close with George. Right. And, right. And so, um, so that, relationship already made sense so i i agreed to join but when i joined i, sh I shouldn't talk about that but i'll talk about it anyway but i i had heard that see there's a band from santa barbara called toad the wet sprocket yeah and i really looked up to these guys when i was younger and um they're only a 
few years older. Like Glenn Phillips, the singer, mm -hmm. was a junior at San Marcos High School when I was a freshman. Okay. Wow. And so when he was a junior in high school, the his band got signed. And they I were, know. They were gone on the road. Nineties, they were like exploded, and that Columbia Records bought out and bought those first two records that they had released independently on their own and um, re-released them uh, before uh, uh, Fear came out, which had All I Want on right. it and stuff, right? Um, so anyway, it was just like, oh, this is possible. This is like the only thing I love, the only thing I'm good at, and Toad did this, so this must be feasible Lucrative, thing to do. You know, yeah. Because you're young and you're so dumb, you don't know that everything that is against you in the process, right. you just go for it, you know? And uh, so at any rate, I kind of, I put everything I, I had into music. I left high school a year early. Um, I had a lot of difficulty in high school. Was actually asked to live, leave my freshman year. So I got kicked out of high school my freshman year. The first, that's the first year of high school when you're in the United States. So, um, so yeah, I had a rough time and I was having a hard time getting caught back up. So Damn. I ended up just, I ended up leaving high school and testing into city college. Right. So that I could take music so classes. The GED. Yes. Like mm -hmm. a GED, um, it was a proficiency exam. So, right. so that they would let me in so that I could just take music classes and in general ed too, but I could take a jazz improvisation and right. music theory. And Did you excel string, when you took a string ensemble? Uh, um, the jazz improv class, I absolutely loved. I <clears> absolutely <throat> loved it. And there were several other musicians that ended up getting in signed bands from that same program you know I was in. I'm going to jump ahead. Um, yeah. And um, weird question, but Hayes. Oh, yeah. The bass. Yeah. How? I don't know. You know, that's one of the early songs that we wrote. And at that point, what happened was ESPN um, had reached out to us through our, our manager, who was just like our bro. He's just the same age as us. It's like, you know, but he did work in Los Angeles and knew some people. So we get asked by ESPN to do some instrumental jams. Mm. And um, so we laid a bunch of stuff down as organized as we could on like a dat tape or something right. oh, sent, sent it down to LA, <laughs> right. You know, some old school digital format and uh, sent it back down to him. But pieces of that were the verses of what became Hayes. Right. Same thing with moisture also uh -huh. came out of that ESPN just jamming. And that a lot of our songs at that point came through just, just playing together <laughs> and JR reaching into um, a lyric books that he had that were kind of like, pre-sketched out, um, you know, ideas, some more um, organized than others, yeah. you know. But I think Hayes was an example of one that he just pretty much opened up his lyric book and started t bringing those words into uh, adding a melody to it and it just working it in. And the, it was very much like Counting Blue Cars and Hayes and a few of those tracks on that record were really just like, Everybody just mm -hmm. putting in their thing yeah. and it coming together. You but, know? And, but this is what impressed me about you. It's when you look at the chords, like counting blue cards, simple chords. Yeah. But then again, the articulation of the arrangement, the placements of notes, I'm visualizing it in my head. Yeah. How you and George just. You're pick a up. drummer and you can visualize this. Yes. I'm also, yeah. <laughs> I know. I love that. That's awesome, man. <laughs> right? You know, I know, right? Like how many people are in this wall? Right? Three musicians and a drummer. But <laughs> <laughs> no, Shout out to George. Yeah, anyway. that's right. No, George does his stuff too. 